in a um, seated position. Let's actually take a few um, breaths in a different way than usual. So, um, and as we do that, we'll just be aware of uh, the sensations and what's going on. So let's actually allow ourselves to naturally breathe, but through the mouth. So watch what happens when you do that first before we um, start to change. So as you're watching the breathing through the mouth, notice, you know, if it feels really strange to you, if you're normally a nostril breather and it's, this is really uncomfortable, or maybe you breathe generally through your mouth when you aren't thinking about it and this feels normal and natural to you. And with the mouth open, maybe you can sense um, the jaw and what the jaw is feeling like if, if there's maybe some tension there. Uh, or if maybe having the mouth open feels really good for the jaw. And then, of course, watching the pacing of the breath, watching whether it's uh, erratic, whether it's shallow. It's generally, um, you know, based on uh, conditions when we do breathe through the mouth. So maybe feels a little unnatural in this position. Let's just take a moment to observe again. All right, and then we're going to start changing the breathing. Before we do, let's actually open the jaw all the way and stretch it a little bit. Maybe take a couple of breaths like this, maybe a yawn. Actually, let's do that yawn. So we're gonna lift the soft palate. Just allowing those inner muscles to relax as well and stretch. So a couple more. The yawns begin to be genuine once we start faking it. And then we'll um, let the mouth continue to just stay open. But now we're going to start breathing more deeply. So it's going to be more audible, inhaling and letting the belly, the rib cage, the chest expand. As you exhale, make a little sound. Ah. Uh, Let the voice come out. So inhaling. Ah. Ah. We're going to take a couple more. As you're doing this with the exhale of that voice, let's allow emotional and mental tension to escape out through the the vibration the vibrating um, that's occurring because of the voice so continuing uh, and if you need to let that exhale be a little higher pitch you know let it let it out let this releasing that tension uh, And then maybe one more, and then we'll be closing the, the mouth and breathing through the nose just as deeply and still as focused on the um, trunk.
All right. The next three breaths that we take with the lips sealed, we're going to allow a visualization to pop up so that as we are breathing out, we're getting showered with some sort of ethereal rain and just allowing that to um, cleanse the body, the mind. We'll put the hands together. Om, I bow to the presence of the divine within, our true and highest teacher that lives in and around us as being, consciousness, and bliss. It is ever present and radiates peace, lighting the way to transformation. Shivaya Gurave Sachidananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejaste Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sachidananda Murtae Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Sachirananda Murtae Nishprapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti Om Peace, Peace, Peace in all the realms. Okay, let's begin to work with the physical body. <clears throat> so let's come forward onto hands and knees. And we'll start to move through cat-cow. So inhaling, feeling the expansion in the trunk. <laughs> Exhaling, feeling <clears throat> that emptiness as we release the air. Inhaling, filling. Exhaling, emptying. Continuing. And then we're going to rest in child's posture. So once you've taken a, an inhale or exhale, you can <clears throat> start to move the knees apart, release the trunk. And actually, if you have uh, something close by, please grab pillows or blocks, preferably for this one, um, pillows or blankets, because we're going to, if you'd like, you do not have to, 
um, allow ourselves to feel a sense of support. So remembering the, the importance of support physically, and of course we know that that is also important important emotionally and mentally. So all around just feeling a sense of stability by giving ourselves a chance to feel the physical support. So having this object underneath the trunk, maybe you can fashion it so that um, you have a little space for the, the head and then you can bring one side of the face down to the, the support. We'll turn the face the other way if you had the face resting on one side. Allowing a nice exhalation or two to come out through the mouth. And then we're going to start to come out of this. And we're going to find our way right into a pigeon posture for a moment. So from table, we can take the right knee forward, the left leg back. And since we haven't really moved the legs, um, it might feel a little stiff going in, um, but we don't really need to, to warm up this area to start with this stretch. So we'll just go in for maybe five or six breaths. <clears throat> um, this may be a good spot since we are a little tighter to, to go with the support. So maybe find that uh, blanket or pillow underneath again. We're going to relax the body as much as we can here. So allowing the limbs to become very heavy. And we'll start to come out of this side. Go right into the other side. And we'll start to come out of this side as well. Okay, from here, right on the hands and knees. If you need support for the knees, if you're on a hard floor, make sure you get something under there. We're just gonna work for a moment with a, a um, we call spinal balance in yoga, physical therapists call it bird dog. <laughs> so we will take the right leg back and rotate the thigh inwardly a little bit so you aren't opening the hip. Um, out to the right, so rotating that thigh inward, keeping the foot as uh, only as high as the hip. People tend to do one of these, and we're not trying to do that. We're trying to keep it level. And then we'll take that left arm forward as high as the shoulder. I tend to bring it lower, so kind of have to 
you know, really feel that one out. And then we'll lower down, pick up the left leg, rotating the thigh inwardly, and then sending the right arm forward. Again, trying to find that right height, shoulder probably, you know, getting the arm as high as the shoulder might feel uh, a little intense. And then we'll start moving that with the breath. So we'll inhale, take the right leg and the left arm up, and then we'll exhale, lower down, remembering to rotate the leg inward so we aren't popping the hip out. Switching, exhaling limbs down, inhaling the limbs up, exhaling down, inhaling up. So as we go, we're strengthening the core. We're also working a little bit here with the shoulders. A nice full body situation. We're going to continue to go for at least another minute. So just focus on the breath and I'll watch the time. Make sure the fingers are spread wide. And if the wrists are tired, you can always come to the fists. And we're here, one minute mark. We're gonna stand on the knees. Take the hands and start to rotate them with, bring them forward, rotate the wrists. Take them upwards, rotating. Take them out to the sides, rotating. Take them behind and interlace the fingers. Squeeze the shoulders back, send the chest upwards. and relax the shoulders, bring the arms alongside the body. Let's take the right knee forward. And um, before we stretch, we'll, we'll do a little work. So let's roll over the back toes. Uh, let's keep the hands to the right thigh for a minute, just stacked, and then pick up the left knee. So a nice strong lunge. And then let's lower the left knee down and bring the top of the foot back to the mat. Roll over the toes again, press into the toes to straighten up the back leg. Lower all the way down, top of the foot comes down. So we had two, let's take three more. And as you're going through, really letting yourself connect to the strength of the glutes. That back one in particular getting very activated. <clears throat> this is our last one. And we have the foot down. We'll sink into the right knee here. Maybe we can roll over or uh, scooch the toes forward. <clears throat> and so we can have the left knee behind the hip. Hands still stay to the thigh for a moment. And we'll go ahead and push into the right foot so we can bring the right knee down, switching into the other side. So left foot comes forward. We're keeping knee and uh, ankle front uh, lined up. Then we'll roll over the back toes, hands are on the thigh. Uh, pick up the right knee, straightening the leg. Keep the trunk upright and then lower. And then we'll take four more. So just letting that whole foot relax down once you have the knee down. This is our fifth. And then relaxing and scooching that left foot forward to get the right knee further behind the hip. And 
breathing deeply. push into the left foot. Let's come to seated for a moment. So before we go further, it's a little bit of a nice slow practice today so far. We're going to sit up really tall. We're going to be moving through some um, side bends and kind of swaying through. And as we're doing this, we're going to work on um, uh, focusing on maybe our biggest struggles this week and allowing those to be played out through the movement. So the movement we'll start with, we'll take the arms out to the sides and inhale them upwards. And then exhale, uh, bend over to the right side, taking the left arm up overhead. And then as you inhale, come back up. Exhale over to the other side. Inhale, come back up. Exhale back to the right side, and then this time we'll circle the left arm down. The thigh goes or the trunk goes closer to the right thigh. We'll trail the left hand out on a semicircle. The right uh, hand following the fingers are kind of just gently touching the floor. Then we'll find that side bend, and then we'll come back up to center. So this is where we'll now switch and start with the left side. So. Uh, Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, and swooshing over, trailing back to the other side, and then into center. So we did right side, left side. Now we'll do our right side again. So we'll exhale, right, inhale, rise. Exhale, left. Inhale, rise. Exhale, trail. And then inhale, rise. Okay, so before we go forward, let's relax the hands down. And let's focus on a specific struggle that we were um, dealing with this week in particular. Emotional, mental. It could be... Um, any, anything that you had to deal with that you knew was stretching you to a limit. And we're gonna allow that to be expressed through the movement that we make. Um, as you're doing this, if you'd like to incorporate sound, you can also do that. So letting those exhales, um, letting those be vocal. So let's start again with the arms reaching up. And I think we're starting with the left side now. So exhaling left. Inhaling, right, inhaling, left. Let the fall be nice and dramatic. Inhaling, exhaling. Add a little bit of your style in there, that style that's going to help you with that expression. We're going to keep going, but at some point, try to switch the order of the ankles.
a couple more rounds. And then once you finish that final round, we'll just be sitting nice and tall for a moment. Allow the body to quiet down, even in the breath. Let us feel a sense of inner stability for a moment. Really focusing on that stability. And if that helps you, if a visualization helps you, please invoke that. So maybe um, the body uh, that you're in right now like turns to heavy gold and is just very, very stable, very, very strong. Maybe even like brilliant and shiny. Or maybe you visualize a boulder or a mountain or a really old, strong tree. Let's sense the firmness of that stability. The strength built into it. Three long breaths. And we're going to come back to hands and knees. This time into downward facing dog. Actually, before you do, please grab a block or a stack of books. We're going to do a, a supported version. If you've got two blocks, eventually we might get there. But for now, let's start with the one. Uh, we might need to stack it up um, to its highest height. And then we'll find downward facing dog where we will then bring the forehead to the block. Check in with the legs. You might need to move them around a little bit or keep them bent if they're not ready to straighten. So the forehead is on the block rather than the crown of the head. All right, let's uh, position the head so maybe we'll lift it a little bit, look forward, and then let's step the feet forward. But we'll take the feet to the edges of the mat, so coming into a bit of a wider stance. Lowering the trunk, maybe clasping opposite elbows with the hands. Knees can bend. How about we come into a twist next, maybe with the support of one of the blocks. Let's even if we just have one, we're going to start with it. And then maybe when we don't need it, we can just get rid of it. All right, so another breath here in the fold. And then we'll start to come up halfway, lifting the head, flattening the back, bringing a block right under the chest. Let's see if we can bring the palm down, straighten the right leg, but bend the left knee a little bit more deeply. And we'll start to peel the right arm up towards the sky. Pressing into that right hip. Looking up past the right thumb as much as we can. We're exercising the eyes as we're taking them to the corners. All 
Let's bring the right hand down and switch sides. Right knee bends, left leg straightens. Peel the left arm up, that right palm is planted. Looking up past the left thumb, taking eyes as far left as we can. And we'll lower the left arm. Okay. If you have two blocks or even the one, let's plant the palms and keep the legs straight, building the blocks to the necessary height so that you can, you can do that. Now some might be able to feel very comfortable taking the palms down to the, the mat, keeping the legs straight, but um, if that feels like you're straining, give yourself the support. It's really um, a learning lesson the, the blocks, the blankets, they, they really teach us something, and that is that it is okay to ask for help, ask for support, and to receive it gladly. Let the head go. If you start to notice it's getting a little easier, you can heel toe the feet a little closer together, even if it's just one step closer. Do your best to keep the back straight. We'll be here probably another minute, so It'll give us a little time to maybe get the feet closer together. If you notice that the back starts to round when you bring the feet closer together, you might need to pull away. Uh, last little trick, um, you'll notice that you'll probably start to take your weight to the edges of the feet. Um, that's taking the stretching action away from part of the back of the leg. So we're going to instead push into the arch of the feet, the inner parts of the feet. Bringing weight there. All right, wherever the feet are, that is fine. Let's come up halfway length in the spine, put a little bend in the knees, bring the hands to the hips, and then let's start to rise up nice and slow, actually. Take your time. Coming to a standing position. All right. So feet, hips distance apart now. We'll bring the arms um, down alongside the thighs. And then as you inhale, reach them upwards. Let the palms face each other. Take a few chin tucks. And then keep the chin in slightly. And then let's step the left foot to the back of the mat. And keep the heel lifted. So we're in a bit of a high lunge. And we need to really let ourselves feel the weight of the legs. Let yourself feel the weight of the legs. Feel them pressing down and holding the, the rest of the body really well. And then we're going to twist to the right today. So take the left arm forward, the right arm back. If it's hard to get that right arm back, you can bring the right hand to the right hip. Maybe turn the head to look past the right thumb. Again, feel the weight of the legs so you can stay balanced in a little bit more of a difficult position when that's easily knocks us off our feet. Let's bring the right hand forward, 
Send both of the arms upwards. And then we'll come into a warrior B, turning the, the hips, the left toes to the left, arms come to a T. Look past the right fingertips, shoulders back and down, feeling the strength and stability in this posture. Looking past the right fingertips in a focusless gaze. Not looking to entertain the mind by looking at shapes. Staying inwardly focused. And then we'll straighten the right leg. Take the left arm down, the right arm upwards. And we will come back to uh, upright position with the trunk, turn the right toes to face the side of the mat. Then we're gonna find eagle arms. So we have the right arm in front. Uh, we will take the left elbow in front of the right arm to start and then see maybe you'll, uh, finding eagle arms, maybe you'll push tops of the hands into each other or palms of the hands into each other. Take the elbows forward and upward. And then let's begin to fold. So we're gonna start coming down and then we'll put a little bit of a bend in the knees as we lower all the way down. Maybe let the head go for another moment. Let some tension in the neck be released. Just being willing to open up areas that are uh, places we might hide our emotions and our thoughts resulting into physical tension. All right, so now let's bend the knees and recovering from that fold, very slowly unroll the spine. Once the head rises, take the arms and we'll take them out and behind again, interlacing the fingers like we did earlier, but in a different position now. Taking the shoulders back, the head back, and let's fold here. And we'll start to come up, maybe bend the knees a little bit releasing the arms. We're going to face the back of the mat so we can come right into the position we were on the first side, which was the uh, high lunge. So we're going to turn and we're just getting into it in a different way. We have the back heel lifted. We'll take the arms upwards. So left foot is forward, right uh, leg is behind, nice and straight and strong, allowing ourselves <laughs> to feel the weight of the legs. Maybe they turn into that gold that we visualized earlier. And we're gonna start to twist to the left, taking the right arm forward, left arm behind, looking as far back as we can. Keep the trunk upright. We'll circle the arm down, both arms go up, and then we'll open to the right this time. Arms coming out, toes, right toes facing the side of the mat. And then we'll start to look past the left fingertips. Now focusless gaze, focus on the internal experience. Feeling strength and stability in this warrior B posture. For a couple more breaths, what might lead us into the next uh, inner step would be feeling a sense of courage. So in allowing ourselves to come into that feeling as well. And then we'll straighten the left leg, right hand down to the right leg, left arm up, looking up. And 
hand, we'll go ahead and cross that left arm in front as we pivot the left toes to face the side of the mat. Wrap the right elbow in front of the left. Wrap the arms around each other as best as you can, elbows forward and up. And then we'll begin to fold at some point. Again, you might uh, put a micro bend in the knees, or maybe at this point it feels good to keep the legs straight. We are creating a little bit of resistance here with the arms. Little bend in the knees, slowly recovering, allowing ourselves to take time as we unroll the spine. Okay. Once the head rises, unraveling the arms, we'll take them upwards and then behind again, interlacing the fingers, squeezing the shoulders back, looking up. Here, once again, we will fold forward. Letting the head go, maybe we can heel toe the feet a little further apart. Actually, I'm going to bring a block to uh, bring my the crown of my head to, and you might want to join me in that. This time we're going to release the arms down. Maybe if you've still got that support with the head, then we'll take the arms forward. Maybe taking the feet further apart and adjusting the block if needed. If you're not using a block, a head can, the head can hang loose or you might take it forward and then release it. Let's take about five more breaths. We'll be coming up halfway, might heel to the feet a little closer together so you can bring hands to hips comfortably, bend the knees, and then rise back up to standing. Let's find a balancing posture today. So um, I'd like to leave it up to you today. So if you need support, use the wall or a chair. Um, but three possibilities, we can go into a tree, uh, we can go into a single-legged chair, or we can go into a version of dancer. You know, there's different steps in every posture. I think all of us are comfortable enough to kind of decide where we'd like to go. But first, gauge the body. Don't rush into it. Notice what part of the body, like, you know, you can imagine, oh, I'd like to experience this in my hip based on what I'm dealing with and the conditions currently in the body. Um, and then go with, go with that. And then once you're there, you'll take five breaths each side. So 
Might be just about there. Um, don't rush, just finish up and I'll kind of t tell us where we're going next. Maybe grab some water. Uh, we will be going into a posture that might be helpful to do by a wall or a chair, uh, maybe a chair. We've already taken some twisting action today. So we're going to do that again, but in a standing position. And the wall again might come in handy. So the first um, point I think we'll make here is we'll have the left foot down. We'll pick up the right knee, maybe right hand to the wall. If at any point you want to let go, you're definitely welcome to do that. Left hand to left knee and we're going to hold the outside of it and push that leg in as we begin to turn to the right. So this is possibility one. And maybe you take the right hand and hold something behind, or maybe you bring right hand to the hip. And um, we'll take a couple breaths here first. So we're going to take this variation, then we'll try another variation in a moment. We're going to come back to center, release, and switch sides. So left knee comes up, left hand to hip. Right hand to outer left leg, press into the leg so we can turn to the left. Maybe left arm goes out to the back. Hand to hip, we'll come back to center. So that's our first variation. If the second variation doesn't work for you, you're going to come back to the first variation. So now hands to hips, uh, pick up the right uh, uh, leg again, but this time maybe grasp the outer right foot with the left hand and begin to take that leg forward. Now, you might not straighten it all the way and that's totally fine because you could still do it this way. Uh, then we'll start to turn to the right. And maybe again, you use the wall or maybe you take that right arm behind Remembering that bending that leg is totally fine. And we'll start to reverse out of this, coming back to center. <sighs> How about before we take the other side, let out any sound with those exhales, any kind of frustration that we might be building because we're doing things that are challenging. Um, because what's that saying? It's not worth doing if it isn't hard to do. So let ourselves start preparing for the next side. Hands to hips. Lift the left knee up. Take the right hand to that outer leg. Actually, sorry, to the outer foot. Then we're going to see about maybe straightening the leg a little bit, maybe all the way, and then begin to turn to the left. You might find this side feels different than the other side. And slowly reversing out. Ah, and releasing. I used to do that a lot to relieve back tension. Um, it's been quite a long time since I've done it, so kind of feeling that instability and uh, the more we do something, the more constant that thing becomes. So, you know, maybe you felt a little instable and that's totally fine since we're working on building that today. All right, so we'll find ourselves to the top of the mat. Just standing nice and tall. And let's be there for a moment and take a few deep breaths. All right. So from the top of the mat, let's inhale, reach the arms upwards. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, come up halfway, lengthen. Exhale, bring the hands down. Let's find a plank posture for a moment. And how about we lift the hips high, as high as the shoulders? 
Now drop the hips down. So we're creating a nice straight incline. I'm gonna feel a pull, uh, a nice uh, activation in the low back. We're gonna take this down to a forearm plank. So when you're ready, one elbow down at a time. And then again, maybe lift the hips high as the shoulders and then lower them down, not all the way. So you can start to feel a nice pull in the low back too. And we'll lower the hips all the way down, tops of the feet down, the legs apart, propping up into a sphinx. If you need to take the elbows uh, further away from the rib cage, please do, but find the lowest point in the back that you can have this nice deep extension. Relax the glutes. Let's close the eyes, sinking into the spine. few more breaths. Okay, so we're going to start to move into another um, inner state of being. So keeping eyes closed and allowing the scalp to release and relax. The forehead, the cheeks, the chin the upper lip and the lower lip. And in particular, as we're holding the head up, it's allowing a sense of peace to like a, be absorbed throughout the skull and the, the face or the brain, mouth. And then we'll let that work down into the throat, affecting the, the way we think, the things that we say. And then let that sense of peace move down into the chest and be absorbed by the heart, having an effect on the way that we feel. and let it move through the rest of the body, the arms, the trunk, the legs. And we'll lower all the way down. Bring the forehead down, bring the arms alongside the body, turn the face to one direction. Rest the spine. Turn the face the other way. Bring the forehead to the mat, bring the palms down under the shoulders, lift the head, the chest, Push into the hands, find a cobra for a moment. And pick up the hips, coming into table where we're gonna come right into pigeon. So take the right knee to the right hand, left leg slides back, and then begin to lower and see. Maybe you need some support for the, uh, the neck, bringing block to forehead, or maybe you're good and you can take the hands there or the forehead comes to the mat. And we'll be here for a few deep breaths.
got one more breath. That was one minute. So let's start to make our way out and go right into the other side. About three more breaths. And we'll start to come out. That was one minute. All right. So let's go back to standing on the knees. Bring the hands behind, interlace the fingers. And then we'll go ahead and release that. Bring the right foot forward. Sink forward into the right knee, left knee as far back as you can. Take the left arm across the chest, hook the right arm in front of it, and draw the left arm in. So working on the upper body, the lower body at the same time. I'm going to take the left arm up overhead, fingers to the left elbow, drawing the chin in slightly to push that arm back. And pushing into the right foot, releasing the arms, bring hands to hips, send the right toes upwards, straighten up the right leg, and then fold forward into that right leg. Maybe hands around the leg or on blocks. See how far you can get into this. We've done a, a lot with the legs today, I think. So maybe we can just go a little deeper. And then we'll come back up with a flat back, releasing this leg, sending the left foot forward. We sink in again. This time we'll cross the right arm across the chest, left arm in front, pulling it in. We'll send that right arm up overhead, left fingers to right elbow, drawing it back and center, drawing the head in slightly. Releasing the arms, hands can come to hips, straighten the left leg, toes go up, and then we'll hinge forward. See how much deeper we can get without folding the, uh, rounding the back. And we'll rise up and come to seated 
folding hands, turn head left, right. Head to center, up and down. Head to center, right ear up. Head to center, left ear up. Head to center, tilting left, right, releasing head down, shaking it out. Head to center, cross the wrist, fingers to the base of the neck, right above the clavicle. Put pressure there and then lift the head with the chin. Bring the head to center. We're going to come down to the back to rest. So once you get down to the back, see if you'd like to take a quick uh, posture, maybe single light, um, uh, simple spinal twist. As you're going through, I'm going to be ringing the um, ting shahs, a much higher pitch sound. Um, it's often used for meditation to get rid of uh, our, we'll just say our thoughts to clear the mind, to bring the uh, mind into a state of stability in itself. It is a very unstable place, as we know. So just allowing this to really wash over the mind as much as you can. Clarifying as you're preparing to rest in Shavasana. So if you aren't there already, make your way to lying down with the arms alongside the body, the palms flipped upwards, the legs apart from each other, the toes turned away from each other. And we'll take a deep breath in through the nose. Release on the exhale, everything, letting go. This time, inhale and create tension throughout the body. Close the fist, the eyes, the jaw, the toes. And on the exhale, release and let there be a voice. Ah. Inhaling, tensing up. Exhaling, releasing. Ah. Inhaling, tensing up. Exhaling, relaxing. Ah. One more time. Inhaling, tensing everything up. Let the body shake. Exhale, releasing. Now we're going to just let this um, period of time in which we do nothing to help um, continue this purification process that we've been working on, this um, uh, work that we've done on creating an inner stability and an outer stability. And just allowing that to continue, letting the body, the mind, and the heart digest what has happened. Just resting in that and allowing that learning process to be even when challenging to be a peaceful one. Resting.
little by little start to become aware of the current state you're in. Notice what sort of quality of consciousness you're experiencing. Maybe how peaceful, maybe you're sensing that stability or specific feeling like courage. Maybe something else entirely, just notice it, be aware. And then little by little, we'll start to allow ourselves to fill um, with deeper breaths. And as you're doing that, maybe pick that quality that you know you could uh, utilize that would be useful for you, helpful for you and other people around you. If you could really embody a specific quality, if you could really embody peace or stability, You could really embody uh, love itself, patience. And then we'll slowly, as you continue to take those uh, fulfilling breaths, begin to move the fingers and the toes. Maybe take the arms behind and find length. And then bringing the knees into the chest, wrapping the arms around the knees. Finding your way up to a seated position. <clears throat> So we're going to close with uh, Mangala Mantra, which we do that every week, but um, this time we'll, we'll have specific um, people or groups of people in mind that we know need um, our need of uh, recreating a sense of stability, recovering a sense of um, tranquility and peace to whatever extent that they can, despite the difficult circumstances. And then wishing for, at the same time, that when we say, all, may all people be well, we mean all. So we don't just mean victims or people who um, are being targeted. Um, you know, as we know around the world, that's an issue. But also those who inflict suffering, as it said in Theosophical Prayer in particular, because um, those are the people most in need of, um, of becoming well. So we'll bring the palms together. After we chant Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu, we'll also chant Om three times, specifically holding um, through those periods, specifically holding the, um, the healing uh, energy as we send it to other, uh, all beings, all beings. May all people be well. May great masters protect the earth properly and justly. May one be eternally fortunate with cows, meaning wealth, and wise ones. May all the worlds be happy. Vasti prajabya paripala
Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. I honor the light in you that is the same light in me. Namaste.